All right, you wrongins. In this tutorial, we're going to do a, a run cycle in 3ds Max using the biped uh, character setup. Um, if you, what you're going to need for this tutorial is you're going to need a copy of this book here, which is, in my opinion, one of the best character animation books out there, Preston Blair's animation. You're going to need a copy of 3ds Max. If you're a student, you can register on Autodesk site and download it. You have to jump through a few hoops if you're a student to get it, but you can get it for free. Or you can get it if you're um, an indie, if you intend to use uh, 3ds Max and you're an indie developer, you can also get a subscription for £300, else you've got to pay uh, a big fee for it. Okay, or there's other options which we're not gonna go into at this present stage of how you can get it. So moving swiftly on, in this tutorial, we're gonna just basically show you the basics of setting up a, a run cycle. So basically what we're gonna do here is set up, um, gonna show you how to get the biped character into the scene and show you just a couple of core fundamental things that I feel every animator needs to know if they're using the biped uh, character set up in uh, 3ds Max to try and uh, get the best out of it. Okay, let's jump straight in there. Okay, let's jump in. So basically, once you've booted up um, 3ds Max, you basically swing over to command panel, which is this area here, click on uh, the plus key and then what you want to do is click on this systems key here. Click on there. And then you've got the biped to come up. Yeah. When you boot up, I think it's, it doesn't start off on biped. It starts off on this one. So you click on the key here and then you've got biped. Click on it. And then you get another select of selections comes up. Now, what you want to do is click down in your top view. Not the front or the left, but the top one. Click on the center in the center area is always the best place to start. And then voila, we've got our our skeleton character. Now at the moment, my character's got, um, let's have a look at him. He's got a ponytail. So you don't have to have a ponytail, but I like to have a ponytail in it because it's good for practice for secondary animation. So my character's got a pony, three ponytail links. So, uh, for this little tutorial, just have it. It's good practice. Now, I don't usually use the skeleton setup. It's up to you if you want to use it. I just, just don't like the look of it. So, I usually use um, the classic version. And then, so now, everything's set up ready for your animation. That's basically that simple. So, instead of rigging or anything, all that other nonsense, using, that's why I like using... Um, 3ds Max biped system because it's just you don't have to set up all this rigging uh, setup like you got to do in a uh, Maya and in uh, a blender this to me is the perfect setup so okay so we've got a character in the scene and the next step we're going to do is we're going to do some animation with him so let's get on to that part Okay, so this is the, the animation that I created. Now, it's not the best animation ever, but it's okay. It's okay-ish. So, the thing that you notice on this animation, there's, there's zero to 30 frames. But, so that technically there's, um, 31 frames so really when you animate you don't mean you'd, you'd use when I started off this animation I didn't start off with 31 frames I broke it down to the more traditional way the traditional animators the way they'd work is you you would do your key frames only now if you look on a Preston Blair book there's eight key frames so you do those eight key frames first so what, let's go back to a, an, an animation of earlier, of what I did. Oh. 
Right, so when I'm doing my animation, the first thing I usually do anyway is, as I say, I, I, I do the keyframes. So what you do is you click on here and then you make sure it's on frames and then you've got your, in this bit, bit animation, you've got start frames and your end frames. So I would just then, you can add more or take away, but you only need your key frames. So you just, you, you'd have your, your key frames which I've got here. I haven't got all of my frames, my in-between frames. I've just got my core key frames. That way you can keep it. It's easier to do your animations when you've blocked it out with the key frames. And then I'll show you how to rescale it later. But you do your blocking out first and it's easier to keep a handle on your animation. And if you get your key frames done really well, when you rescale the frames and you add in your in-betweens, it makes the whole process so much quicker. I see a lot of animators try and do your in-betweens and the keyframes together and it just turns into a big mess and a big soup where the traditional animators learn from them, do your keyframes first and then do your secondary animation and your in-betweens your in and your secondary animation afterwards to get the, the keyframes locked, blocking in blocking in your animation keyframe. That's all it is. So that's that's there. So if we look at this animation, it just looks like really fast, you can't see it. So one of the key things to do when you're doing your animation, I'm not gonna go through every step because this is, this is not what this animation tutorial is. This is trying to give you some key ideas of how to do it. So I'll do each keyframe if you look at it. The each, each keyframe is sorted out. And then what you what I did what I then what I would then do after I blocked out my key animations, I would right click, and then I'll go rescale time, and then I'll f say for this one I'll have it 33, and then click on there. Now it's added those those in between frames. Yeah. So that is another thing. What I try and do is and I've not done it properly here, is if you get the right, the maps right, if, it's, if, there's, if there's eight keyframes, you would then do 16. So you always double the same amount of number of keyframes, try and, I mean, not double it, but make it, um, I don't know what the word is to use. Um, you either double or triple it or whatever, but it's got a match the number you don't like you don't if you've got if you've got say five keyframes you then do and you want to do your in between you then do 10 keyframes or if you've got if you want it if it was 10 then you do 30 yeah if i don't know if i've, if I've explained that right you don't just do 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 a rescale of time for if you've got five keyframes you do a rescale of time of um an odd number so if you i'm not odd number so you've got five you then don't, don't do 12 rescale time because then it, the timing is, is thrown off. So that is the way you do it. So there's that. So that is another important thing. Another thing that if you notice what I've done here is I usually add guides. So to help me with foot positions, etc. Um, I load up one of the later animation, I'll show, show, show it again before I open. So if you look what I've done here, if you see what I've done here, I've got some guides there so that I know where exactly where his foot position is. Yeah. So that I, I don't get thrown off. So that's is that's another important thing to do. Have a few guides. If you don't know where the guides are, click on here and then see that this is your your helper. So this is your guides. So I just use a tape, tape measure. Yeah, and that that would you can just move that or whatever 
and that's just to help you. They're just invisible objects that, that will help you with your, your process of animation. Right. So that is a key fundamental part. So the thing is, when I, when I tackle an animation, the first thing, I try and break it into simple steps as possible. You do key, frame, key frames first, you're blocking in first, then only after your key frames are done, then you, then you do your, um, then you do your, your, your what's, you rescale the frames. And after you've rescaled the frames, remember rescaling, just so click on here, right hand click, and then rescale the time. And then you can rescale it here. And then that will create your in-betweens. And then you rescale the time. And once you've done your rescaling the time, then you can work on your secondary animation, you know, like the ponytail, etc. So, so that's the way you do it. Now, when you're dealing with a, a walk cycle, let's get rid of the clay and default shading. When you're doing a, an animation in the biped, If you're doing a run cycle, the, it's a very important, this is the thing you gotta look into. Now, I'm gonna talk about this a little bit. You're gonna be using, when you do use it using uh, the biped, you're gonna be using uh, keyframing tools. Now, this, do you see this bar here, key info? This is a very, very important part of what you need to understand about when you're doing your, your animations in biped especially. This is just to set a key. So you can set your keys down there. You have, always have it on auto anyway, but you can set a key, you delete a key. This is a set planted key. This, this is a set planted key for either your foot or uh, you can set for your foot or your arms, your hands. And then you've got a set free key. Now the reason why you have your set planted key, say for example you're doing a jump or something like that, or you your foot like this position here is he's key he that key is planted on the ground. So I would want that as a planted key. So you see see that see that key colour is is orange because it's a planted key. And then the other key is that's a sliding key. And you see that's yellow. So I would have created a sliding key for that and then created another sliding key for that and then set, created another sliding key for that because it's sliding, yeah? So understanding that is important. So you've got your, you, you got your, your planted, your slide, and then your free keys, as in you don't want any constraints to it. So it, it doesn't do any maths or anything. It will mess up your animation. So because this is in the air now, See that, that's a free key and it's like black. So that's a free key. So these animations, the ones, all the ones in his air, in the air are free keys. Yeah, they're free keys. So that's an important part you need to understand. Another really, really important part that you need to understand and you're gonna have to you play around with it as well. If we go to wireframe mode now, and we swing down to um, uh, IK, click on IK and click on that box here. And then we click on, we go to the frames. You see this, this is your pivot point. Now at the moment, if I was to rotate it, see that hair you click, I clicked on the icon here to get it up and running this little thing here now it doesn't look like much but it's really important now if I was to rotate this foot now that's what I do it rotates around that key point there but say I don't want it to rotate around that point there so say for example let's turn off the auto key in a minute See when it lands, you see that I've switched, I've switched the the pivot point because I want him to 
I wanted him to rotate around this point here. And you can switch between your key, your pivot points by doing that. Yeah, so now if I was to rotate it, it rotates around that point. Now this is really important to understand these, understanding these pivot points. And these pivot points are also in the hand as well. But you do fill out a run cycle, you don't need to understand it. We're not going to get into it. I, I think they're in the hand as well. I can't remember. But but for this tutorial, let's not let's not try and complicate because we just just in the foot. Then you know they're in the foot anyway. I know they're in the foot. So that's an important part that you have to understand. You get get used to playing with them as well. Um, I think that's it really. This tutorial is not. As I said, it's just trying to give you a few pointers of doing doing your animation, speeding it up. And I think, no, if you're going to take anything away from this tutorial, and you can use this even if you're using Blender or Maya, the, the way the scaling frames is a bit different in Maya and in Blender, I don't like using it, but you can technically rescale frames as well using those programs, but I'm not going to get into it anyway. But... The most important thing is blocking in your frames. Block your keyframes. Keep it simple as possible. So just you, you don't have. So I see a lot of animators that come in and go, right, I'm going to do a hundred frame walk cycle, and then they create it with a hundred frames. It's just that's not what you do. You just keep it very simple. You do it eight frames, and then scale it up afterwards. You know, to keep it simple. If you're going to learn anything from that, block your frames out first, and you know. Um, it's, even if you're not, you, even if you're just sketching them out first, maybe sketch them out first, your keyframes, before you actually um, put it into the 3D model. Okay, that'll end this tutorial. Um, I hope, hope I've been some help to you. Um, hit like and subscribe to help the algorithm, because eventually I would like to get some money out of this, because I don't get any payment from it. Um, and it'd be nice to build up my channel so I can get, actually get, get some dough. Because those bailiffs, they keep on knocking on my door. It's not much fun. Nah, it's not that bad yet. No, it is pretty bad, actually. I do have bailiffs knocking on my door. But moving ever so swiftly on. Hope you like, you wrongins. Look out for the next uh, tutorial. And uh, I hope you like this one. All right, laters. Bye.